It's time for the best fitness podcast in the world. We're also entertainment. I know. I know. You guys already knew that. Anyway, here's the giveaway with today's episode. Matt Strong, one of you lucky viewers, gets access to Map Strong for free, which means you get to look awesome and get strong, boost your metabolism, get lean, and get super, super sexy. Here's how you can win Maps Strong. You got to leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. You got to do all those things. And if we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to Map Strong. Also, huge promotion going on right now uh, this month. Maps Anabolic plus the No BS six pack formula. Two programs, two programs discounted together. So it's a bundle for $59.00. 99 cents. That's the lowest price we've ever sold both programs for combined. Really, really good. Again, discounted rate. Go check them out. Head over to mapsoctober.com to sign up. All right. Here comes the show. Adam. No. I want to. Oh, no, we're okay. not talking about. Really? I see. I see your. Wow, notes. He shut you down, right? I see. Away. I see his notes. No, no, no. Sal no. ran again. No, no, no. We're not talking about that. <laughs> we're not going to get to that later in the episode. We're going to okay. build up to I'm that. Just, oh, we're going to build yeah. up to that. No, I'm going to give you a compliment. Calm oh, down. Oh wow! Look, you jumped the gun on yeah. the compliment. Yeah, dude, you're looking. You're looking good. I saw you post a picture of yourself after you worked out. Are you back on track? What's not going at on? all? I'm actually in some of the worst shape I've ever been in. You're a big liar, I'm, dude. I'm not like lying to you. Yeah. When you see that, when the only times you see me work out is like, oh, I'm really working out right now. I haven't got that many. I train. I take that back. I train my legs at home two days before that. Um, yeah, but you're more consistent than you have been, or something. No, I'm really, not, no. You just you got. I don't do a lot of posts of me pumped up, bro. You're used to seeing oh, me deflated, man. and that's. What, I'm always trying to tell people that, like they, you know, they see go. how massive you are. Here we go. Here you we see go. how massive right. you are, and all the pumps that you get before we, we do these podcasts. The They're like, well, oh, so. what happened to Adam? I'm like, well, fuck you guys. Watch me go get aired up for 30 seconds, and then mm. so I got to throw it on my story yeah. just to tell everybody. How did what time this it happen? Is. I gave you a compliment. It wasn't really a compliment. It was. I know it was you searching for another compliment yeah. no it wasn't it was. no, no seriously I, 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 okay so you're not bad you're not as no i'm not i'm really not and and honestly uh so i've talked before about how i i rarely train my arms because that's all i have to do i do like and that's because of so many years of training yeah, over training yeah. them like crazy that i barely got to touch them and, and they get aired up how crazy. weird is that though some people have that ability to just when they get a pump they look way different other, other people not so much well mm -hmm. not only that but you actually brought something up and you uh i think you shared a study around this and when we first met you actually uh said that you would predict this about me when i talked about man it's so um so hard for me to like build muscle and but he, and i lose i lean out really quick and you're all, I bet you respond though really quick when you get back on. And I didn't believe that really. Um, now being older and, you know, falling off the wagon, being on the wagon as far as my consistency, uh, it, I see that now. I see yeah. it now after decades of training uh, that I can take a break for a while, fall kind of out of shape. And then if I can, if I dial the diet in, touch the weights, my body responds. There, there's really. a pretty cool, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm, careful with using this word, but there's a bit of a permanence when it comes to like resistance training. Obviously it's nothing it's permanent, but the longer you keep the muscle and strength, the easier it is to maintain it. And there was that study that came out, right? Where they say one ninth yeah. of mm -hmm. the volume to keep muscle that you 100 have to build. Believe that now. I really do. And I think that, um, I think the training for the competition for that four year stint or so that I was on, I think that has, cause I never felt like that before. So if you were to go right back before competing days for but you me. were so consistent for four years. oh yeah i've never been that consistent in my life right. ever and 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 for that you know for four years right of like never missing a workout staying dialed on the diet like even when i wasn't you know quote unquote perfect as far as what i was eating it was accounted for mm -hmm. right so if i ate outside of the perfect diet, i still got what my body need to grow like and training like would that. you say that going uh, extreme for a brief you know, period of time would have like some benefit in terms of like I do capacity. Yeah. I do. I really as do. As long as it's appropriate, right? Not that you're going extreme and you're overworking your body, but rather just super consistent, everything focused, dialed in for years. I feel like after that, it's so much easier. You know how hard it used to be yeah. for me to be over 190 pounds <clears throat> when I was a kid? So hard. Now it's like I, well, I, think, I just sit there. No I problem. think there's a couple things happening there too. Aside from what you know, muscle memory and things. There's also the uh, when you when you've been dialed like that for so long, um, 
you learn a lot about oh, yourself. Yeah, that's true. There's yeah. there all of us in this room, uh, it, with all of our combined knowledge, are still uniquely different as far as how our body responds to certain exercises, yeah. what diets work well. You for know you. what to look for. Yeah, how it really feels. in tune. With yeah, and, it, and especially doing systems. it on a competitive level, I really know how to change, and I had to because you know I only got two weeks out. I got to look like this, or yeah. oh, getting out of off the stage now. I want to go do this. Like I only got three months before this next show, so. I, I had to like really work like that. And so it allows me now when I want to kind of turn it around really quick, mm -hmm. I can, I can, can switch it up. Yeah. But I appreciate the, the compliment, but yeah, yeah no, I'm not, yeah. I'm not I don't you know, I, I noticed it with, with, uh, with my, I don't, I don't feel, compliments well. I don't no. feel Just sexy so right now. Huh? I, I don't feel sexy right oh, now. Yeah. So yeah. Or well, gifts. You, you know, the way you always job. ask Katrina, like, gifts. is that Adam brushing his teeth naked or is he like got his towel on and stuff like that? That's how he, yeah. that's the indicator if I'm feeling That'd be myself. a weird thing to ask you. Hey, Katrina, I got a question for you real quick. Is Adam brushing his teeth Don't act like you don't ask that. Wait a minute. I don't believe you. You asked that the other day. So yeah, don't act like that. Is he rested on the sink? Yeah. No, so my uh, Jessica sees is the same thing. So you know, obviously we had the baby. It's been hard for her to get into a rhythm because of sleep stuff and all that stuff. And so her workouts are like one tenth of what they were before their body weight or whatever. And we'll go to family functions and family members are like, oh my god, your shoulders and your arms, you must be working out like crazy. And she's like, I am not. And it's all the work that she did before. Yeah. That's the thing. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I my workouts have not been this radically different this long for a long time. I have completely dedicated myself to lighter weight, higher reps, getting the pump. And it's because every time I went back to heavy lifting more recently, I started noticing my joints a little bit. And I'm like, you know, I should probably... You're the most dialed I've seen you ever with us. Yeah. yeah. And I I'm mean, training... We've all, we've all been hanging out for almost eight years now, and I've never seen you this dialed for this long. Yeah. It's all higher reps, though. It's all yeah. like straight bodybuilding. I don't even pay attention to the weight that I'm lifting, which for me was so hard to get around. Yeah. And it's made a huge difference for me in terms of how I feel. So and I think that's the better way at this point for me to train for longevity, you know? Yeah, I've definitely been thinking about longevity and also just like my own movement capacity, like being more athletic because I'm just like trying to trying to demonstrate certain movements and be explosive in them and like be able to um, be able to react and have my body respond properly. It's like I need to go back to a lot of these functional exercises and and really promote that more because like you just after a while it just you got cobwebs yeah. you know like with some of these movements if you're not reintroducing oh. them continuously I'm the opposite of that right I now. need to do that so bad yeah. just, I've just been lazy I know I know I need to put that work Dude, in I was running I was play like I was trying to scare my, my son he's 11 months old right and so Jessica will have him you know he'll kind of look for me I'll go around the corner and then I'll come around and I'll, oh, I'll scare him and then I'll run towards him and then run away and I'm like running and I never run and I'm like, this feels like I don't know how to do it. Yeah. So I need to start practicing. This is for an animal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm not even running hard. Yeah. I'm a play Dude, running, you I know? Wanna, I want to see I'm like, this doesn't actually. feel right. Like, hey, I'm not squatting, so I don't know. Speaking of our sons, dude. So you remember I told the story about uh, Katrina, you know, or Max taking Katrina out of the room, something like that? Yeah. He's had such a fun. So this is, we're at two years and what, three months or something like that? So this is marked down, His right? personality's probably yeah, really this is, coming through. Yeah, yeah. This is like a really cool age for me right now. Like, just seeing the little thing. And he's starting to pick up things really Really quick like if you do something and like so i don't even remember what we did first to start telling him like shh like telling him to be quiet like it's bedtime shh, mm -hmm. and we do this so we're we're in a, we're getting ready for bed again and we're we're getting ready to put him down and uh you know i'm reading to max and we're sitting there and katrina's again trying to talk to me and he uh puts his finger to her lips shh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> die laughing you've never seen that's him hilarious that. yeah, yeah. Shh. You, so he doesn't this. do it to he doesn't do it to himself he does it to whoever he wants to shush and he puts his finger to your lips and that's goes, so hilarious shh. and then you laugh about us and I was oh yeah so then he does it more because yeah. you think it's funny aurelius so. if i'm near jessica he wants to go to her i call her number one so i'm always like oh here comes number one because if she's not around i'm the, the coolest thing in the world she's around he wants to go to her but now because of his age he and he likes he wants to nurse all the time he always wants to be on the boob so i'll get him near her and he'll just pull her shirt down it doesn't matter where we're at he'll try to pull her titty out pull it out i'm like oh, we got to be careful if we're at the, where we're at because he'll pull her boob give me the goods right out yeah. like you know whatever. now does she plan to uh because katrina shut down at one year i think is where she shut down is that she wants to keep going to two. Oh, she does yeah 
Yeah, so she wants. That's a big commitment, dude. So. Oh yeah, I remember Katrina when she said she. Katrina said, "I don't want." She said, "I'm not going to commit to any." She goes, "I'm going to do a year for sure. I'll see where I'm at around there." And I remember when the year mark hit, she was like, "I'm ready to be." It's a lot, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it no. is a huge commitment. It's a lot of work. I so. think of all the things that uh, I've watched as you know, as far as raising kids, that I guess that was a part that I obviously was more. Well, my mom also did formula really quick, right? So I guess I didn't see breastfeeding for that long. That was the part that I I didn't realize how crazy that is. You're but, on demand, and it's all it's throughout the whole day. Yeah, uh, and so uh, you can't really do anything. A maybe. mom that makes a, a, a year to me. I mean, you go six months even to breastfeeding consistently. I have so much respect for anybody who can do that, and I don't, and I and I don't shame anyone who can't and doesn't because it's insane. Yeah. Like well, I don't think I can make it. Well, you know what it is is that you think to yourself, especially when they're newborns, right? Okay, every two or three hours you breastfeed. But we don't realize is the time that you're breastfeeding. So it's every two or three hours from the beginning yeah. or something like that. So reality, it's like an hour and a half in yeah. between. So you're constantly all day long. Like you can't even do anything yeah. while you're doing that. You no. know? Well, and then so, they get teeth. And that's yeah. like a whole nother thing. Uh, yeah. Well, oh, and though, then you have the, and I don't know how much Jessica has dealt with this too, of like, you know, she gets engorged on one side or the like, you, she's having issues with latching on one than the other. You they're so, not even. Yeah. So no. Katrina not only was like the, every two hours, but then she was having to deal with pain and things like that. Yeah. Having to take hot showers to calm it down. Yeah. It's like, oh my God. So not only is the dedication every two and a half hours, three hours of doing that, then the that other free time you have is just making sure you're ready for the next two hours. I, it's, I was like, oh my God. You imagine having twins? No. And having to do that? Oh, my yeah. cousin just had two. Double time? Your cousin yeah. had twins? So I have the 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 other Schaefer. So there's only one other Schaefer uh, man in the family that potentially will have kids. Uh, my cousin, uh, Jonathan Schaefer. And he just had, they just had like, what, three, four days ago, had uh, twin girls. Oh. Yeah. Crazy. Well, good for, God bless them, man. Yeah. Two <laughs> babies yeah. at once? Yeah. You need a night nanny. I yeah. had clients that, you, I, so I had a client who had twins. And she told me if you if that happens, a night nanny. Like I don't care if you have to sell your car. What you need to do, it'll save your life. Because when one goes to sleep, sometimes the other one's awake. So you're totally fucked. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're totally screwed. Anyway, speaking of kids, so I read an article in Popular Science. Are you guys familiar with Popular Science magazine? I mean, I well, I actually read it every now and then too. Okay, so. I love pop Popular I've, Science. They're yeah, always posting cool stuff. crossover. Here. Yeah, oh yeah, it's always cool stuff, and you know, it's great to read. Look at listen to this. This is they just put this out. You ready for this? This just came out on the 28th of September. Hmm. Here's the, 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 the title of this article. Has the fountain of youth been in our blood all along? You ready for this? Studies published over the last 15 years have found that young blood can reinvigorate aging mice. Duh. Now scientists are trying to crack the code. Dude, Doug has been drinking young children's no, blood no, for don't so make that long joke. now, dude. Here we don't, go. The stop Adam. Starts. <laughs> so, he gets so hey, mad when I say that. That's what I was saying, Justin. This yeah. big, I'm like, convinced there, he does. There's this big internet conspiracy theory that like celebrities and like wealthy people. It's all tied to this like satanic cult. Yeah, and they get yeah. like, young, like, like, like young children. They kidnap and whatever. They take their blood and it keeps them young and whatever. But dude, yeah. this, si this freaking article supports... All that. And literally, it's saying here, ready for this? Mm. So this is, uh, so uh, places like Stanford and Harvard have shown that when infused with blood from young mice, old ones heal faster, move quicker, think better, remember more. The re experiments reverse almost every indicator of aging the teams have probed so far. It fixes signs of heart failure, improves bone healing, regrows pancreatic cells, and speeds spinal cord repair. Wow. Why would you publish this? I don't know. Yes, I, dude. Stop. All I know is some of those longevity uh, people that want to live forever. Was it like Aubrey de Grey or like some yeah. of those like the guy who looks like he's dead yeah, already? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The ones that are, don't look super youthful, like have been promoting this whole blood transfusion thing from like younger. And they've, I mean, this is I don't know how true it is, right? So I'm going to throw that out there. But you know, some of these Silicon Valley uh, type like CEOs. I don't know if it's like Peter Thiel or somebody else who like had you know, hired some some young men that he would actually do blood transfusions with and everything. Really? For this. So you just reason. hire them? Yeah. I mean, this is, again, this is all <laughs> you're what, saying. Hook up like so. on a dialysis machine and then circulate some of his blood into you or something? I don't, I don't even think you dialysis. I think it just goes right through, right? I don't know. All I know is like uh, we should have been paying attention to all the, the legends of like vampires. Uh, and, like, that's crazy, hello. right? Like, yeah. Hey, that's speaking of vampire, you know, vampire bats, when they, they find like a juicy bite that they put off a sound for the other vampire bats to know that humans can't hear? 
Random Say that fact. again. Wait, hold on Sorry. a second. Random Wait, fact. That what just the hell just happened right was, now? So you just <laughs> dropped some serious knowledge. That, yes, right over dude, my head. I didn't know this, yeah. right? I, I can't. Where did that come? This, uh, is, yeah, I'm never, this has never happened yeah. in seven years of my life. <laughs> Adam just had like Tourette's. <laughs> like, you yeah. just reminded Sometimes me of it. Sometimes the brain parts in the right way. You know what yeah. happened? What dude? happened? You just let out all the information you give Sal. I wish I could tell you guys where I read it. I mean, Doug could probably fact check me. I know it's true. I think you're right. I read it. Yeah, there's vampire bats when they when they find a bite. Uh, a juicy, like, you know, bite, they sound off, they make a sound that other vampire bats can hear, but humans can't hear it. Humans can't hear it. Mm. Yeah. Have you ever seen those like, pictures? Hey, fresh meat. Have yeah. you ever seen the biggest bats in the world? I don't know where they're from. Doug, maybe you can pull it up. It looks like... Yeah, they're crazy looking. It looks like a, a movie vampire that turned into a bat. You know when vampires in movies turn into New bats? They kind of look human. Where, where yeah. are they at? Where are they at? Do you know? I don't know. Probably Doug, Australia where all the crazy shit is. Yeah, I know. Why do they have, why do they have all the crazy animals? Look you, up the biggest bats in the world. You see this? You know what I'm scared of? is some of those bats like, that you've seen that almost have like human... <laughs> size dicks. Have you seen those what, things? dude? What? I'm serious. What kind of porn what? are you watching? I'm not. <laughs> like it's, it's. That's what scares me. You know, like a bat just flying around, like dive bombing <laughs> you with that thing. With the big dong. Yeah. Just, just drink my blood. I'm just, I'm just saying. Stop dude. trying they're to bang me. Yeah, they're, they're out all the there. Time. Don't mess with me. Look up images, Doug, because it's boring to look at an article. <laughs> I don't know why you would do well, that. That's the details, though. I mean, wingspan up to five to six inches. Inches long? That's not big. Five feet, six inches. Oh, five feet, six inches. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Five foot wingspan for a bat? Oh, look oh, at that. Oh, fuck that. Oh, yeah. Okay, click on the one that's hanging oh, there. Dude, no. tell me that doesn't look like a person in a, no, yeah, in a that, costume. That is creepy as hell. If I saw one hanging like that, I I don't know what I would do. Bro, sure where are those vampire. at? Where are those at, Doug? I think the Philippines. Really? Totally avoid that. that Imagine if you look up and that thing's flying above your head. Yeah. <laughs> So what, okay, what yeah, is it no, about them that are so, why are they so much bigger there? <laughs> oh, there's some big balls you're talking about, Justin. I'm telling you, dude. Hold on a second. That's Google it, Doug. That, I mean, your your search engine's ruined anyway. Yeah, that's not human size, though, Justin. That's, well, it depends well, on your point of reference. One, okay, I'm, I'm telling you, there's ones Justin. out there. <laughs> The, they're called be, mega bats. Yeah, giant, giant three inch penis right there. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> right, guys? Isn't that big? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, cool, dude. Yeah, yeah that's your scale, huh? Yeah. yeah. Dude, did you guys hear about uh, Elon Musk's? Uh, okay, so you know he broke up with his, this, what was it? What's her name? Grimes? What's her first name? <clears throat> um, Something Grimes. Sure. His, the girl that he was with, the yeah, weird. The girl he's with. She's kind of a weird chick. They had the kid that they named the weird thing. Uh, I don't remember what. Her, <laughs> so is it like, like a bunch of numbers. Or something? Yeah. What was God? What was her name? Anyway, uh, so Elon Musk's ex girlfriend. I don't even know if they were married. Uh, Grimes is her last name. She she put out this I guess post or something saying that she's going to start a lesbian space commune. Wow. Yeah. So she said, "I'll that be colonizing cool. Europa separately from Elon for the lesbian space commune." Mm. So that's a, that's a, I don't know why they broke up, but anyway, wow. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that happened. But, yeah, um, she is kind of weird, but she that's what she said. She I thought I read do. something about where is where is his current uh, wealth at right now? He just he just he's the richest right now. Is I, he? I, I read somewhere that over he's, Bezos is I, I, he's like at, like I want to say like three hundred billion or something crazy. I don't know, and mm. that's like total wealth, right? Yeah, that's total value. I, I just saw an article around that. Yeah, see. What is that's that's her right there. Oh, she's, she jokes. She's starting a lesbian space. It's oh, not a true thing. I don't know, man. Look at look at a picture of her. <laughs> He's spreading rumors. Might so. be real. I don't know. She might actually try to do this. Mm. Yeah. So what was like like uh, Wonder Woman's planet? What what were they called again? Oh, oh god. There were weren't they Amazonians? The Amazonian. Yeah. Yeah. That's a legend, though, right? Of the uh, all female. Yeah. Island of female warriors. Well, I mean, now we can create it, I guess. So. Yeah, now we can. Yeah. All right. So I got a funny. I got a funny article for you guys. Um, so you know these 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 festivals that happen with music and stuff, and lots of people partying and acting crazy and whatever. <laughs> Yeah, we so, sound like old people talking about that. Right? Yeah, yeah, you know, like, these you guys, kids are doing you know those drugs. Things, and, those, yeah. those things where they all <laughs> gather in loud music. Have you guys heard really of lot of obnoxious drugs? music. And, yeah. yeah. Well, Half so check this out. The, 2000, oh, yeah. Yeah, the 2019 Glastonbury Music Festival had an alarming impact on local waterways. So because the people at the festival- Oh my God, taking so much drugs. They, they were, did so many oh, drugs wow. that their pee had, that their combined urine of their yeah. pee had high concentrations of MDMA and cocaine. So you got, it like, was harming local you wildlife. Fish, <laughs> fish that are on LSD right now. <laughs> MDMA <laughs> and cocaine. Yeah. So they wow. did so many drugs. Wow. They're just that, swimming up toilets. That, that, yeah. that literally the amount of drugs that they had left over in their pee was enough to harm 
wildlife wow. that was around there. That's crazy. So, I mean, I want to see videos of this freaking festival. <laughs> what was, <laughs> I think they're all, I think, I think it's uh, more rare to find somebody sober at one of those things. I think I've never mm. been, obviously I've never been to fest festivals weren't even a thing when I would have been you know, young enough. Yeah, I think we're one. all too old for that stuff. Have you guys ever been to no, like anything I didn't do, I, just, I was going to do stagecoach one year and then I think we talked about Coachella and then I was like, uh, have you done a uh, uh, rave? Have either one of you been like a real rave? No. I mean, no, I haven't been to a rave. I mean, I've been to obviously metal festivals, but um, that's different. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a whole different feel. I'm sure. Did you? Yeah, uh, not did, too many girls. Did either one <laughs> of you guys watch the the news uh, clip that I shared about the company where the CEO raised? This happened like five or six years. I actually think we talked about this on the podcast. Yes, five or six years ago about a guy, a CEO, yes. who decided to make a minimum uh, wage of all employees, nobody under seventy thousand dollars a year, and he was like in the credit card banking type of business. I don't remember. It's a or Gravity, a I think, thing. is the name of the company. It yeah. was credit card processing. Yeah. And so what this guy did is he said, I am the minimum wage or the minimum income my employees will get, he announced this, is going to be $70,000 a year, which actually meant some of his employees went from 30 to 70. Yeah. So he dramatically increased everybody's pay. He took a huge pay Mil cut. He took a million dollar cut. A million dollar cut himself yeah. hmm. in order to make this happen. And of course, lots of people are like, oh, the company's going to fail. This isn't going to work. Well, ap apparently it's done really well um, and it's succeeded. Except one thing that's kind of interesting. They asked him recently about this and he pays himself $70,000 a year. So, okay. that's I'm glad you brought that up because that's the part I wanted to talk about. So... I thought that was so. At the end of the interview, they ask him like, "Okay, so what is your salary?" And he goes, well, "Mine's seventy thousand dollars a year." So two things: either one, uh, why would this be a great business plan? If <laughs> the whole point of taking all that risk and doing that is so that you could make really good money, right. first of all. And then the other thing I would ask is this: is okay, well, we we have a salary ourselves, and then we have a K one distribution. So is he just talking about a salary, and then he has this distribution right. that he gives himself? So he makes seventy thousand dollars a year uh, salary, but then he gets a distribution of a one million something at the end of the year. So that's what I would I would want to yeah I would want to know more detail about. Now that. the employees love working there, of course. And, and now here's the thing though that the that this this particular article or video it that you sounds sent, like it's just perception. They make it look like it's all about the money. Yeah. And I've worked with enough people. I've had enough companies where yes, pay is important, but the the environment, the culture, and the people you work with, in my experience, is more important. And for people who disagree. <clears throat> Go to uh, places where people volunteer, where people literally work for free, but they like what they're doing. They're so passionate about it. They they also have incredible loyalty. Obviously, the company is doing something right if they're still succeeding. I don't know if that is the factor necessarily, but a lot of these employees took a voluntary pay cut when the company reduced their... Remember in that video, they said that the company was losing money during the pandemic. So a lot of a lot of employees voluntarily took a pay cut in order. Oh, to- Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't see in that. Order to help the company. Oh, interesting. Out. What's your thoughts on it, Doug? Did you watch it or no? I did watch it, and I think you make a good point. I, I mean, I can pay myself. We could pay a salary of uh, twenty five thousand dollars. Yeah. Yet we have ownership in in the company, so. I don't know if that's a true reflection of what he's making. Yeah, I think yeah. that was just to make it look good on the news because that probably went over everybody. Oh, said yeah. everybody went, "Wow, what a great guy!" Yeah, he only pays himself the minimum amount, and everybody else gets paid. Yay! A lot of CEOs don't but take any income. Yeah, yeah, like salary. That's yeah. true. Yeah, so, that's very. I true. don't know. Like, yeah, again, it's it's sort of a, a news play. But, but and then if he's really play. actually only making seven dollars, then then that's a stupid business. You know what? Okay, but you know what? <laughs> you know what the problem with this is? Paying though? employees good is obviously. Well, you're you know, also building a company too that's centered around credit card debt too so you're not doing something that's super like noble right you know you're not doing something saving the planet and then also taking this well, terrible salary look, i think here's the problem mm. how many components go into running a successful business there's so many components right it would be like me saying hey look at this company where this uh the ceo pays himself 50 million dollars a year and the bottom employees make minimum wage that's a winning formula because they're so successful that doesn't tell you not even close to the whole story totally. So what they're doing with this company is they're using this. By the way, th for every company that does this, which I, this is the only one I know about, there's about fifty, you know, thousand others that do it differently. So if you want to see what a winning formula is, I think what you want to do is look at the, the the majority of them. But there's so much more. Like we don't know anything else about this company. I would assume because they're successful, 
that they're doing a lot of other things. Yeah, the, the, right. narr- the narrative from the way the news was 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 spinning. But that was it, the winning. That was why. yeah, and yeah. that there's greedy everywhere else are greedy CEOs that make the on average two hundred and fifty percent more yeah. than the you know average salary of the person that's working there. And you know what I always find interesting is nobody really says that about uh, musicians or athletes. Like if if you watch a basketball game and you're a fan, you don't argue that LeBron James shouldn't make more than some other, you know, no name, whatever, average basketball player. Nobody's going to be like, oh, he's so greedy. He shouldn't be. Because you watch the game, you see how good the damn guy is and how, right. how why he's paid so well, much. He's the one bringing all the ticket sales. The in. problem with business is in corporations is nobody sees the plays. Nobody's watching the right. game. Right. All they, they see is. They don't know what it takes. That's yeah. right. They see Amazon. This guy makes this much. This guy makes this much. It's not fair. That's not how it works. It's, you have no idea. You're not watching the game. Because if I guarantee if you go to the average person on the streets and you say, Beyonce made. $200 million last year. Do you think that she deserves it? And people will be like, oh yeah, she's so talented. She's so good. She has these huge concerts. But then you say, hey, the CEO of No Name Corporation made you know 250 times more than his average employee. What do you think? Oh, that's not fair. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not really a fair you know, comparison. That's half the reason why you get into that, though, right? The yeah. Half the reason why you take all the ri- – okay, 80% fail. So you're already you know, <laughs> you're already going uphill here. So And you know you're going to probably have to work for a long time for free, right? Or lose a lot of money before you even get yeah. out of the red. And imagine the hmm. pressure and the stress yeah. of running some of these companies. Like, yeah, I, think, want to? I think the motivation for most people to start that their business is to be able to get to a place where they have financial freedom right. and they can control their, their pay. Like, right. yeah. I don't know. No. So, yeah, I don't know if I subscribe yeah. to the whole narrative that the, yeah. the, the news network is putting out there. Otherwise, mm-hmm. he seems not like the greatest, it's just, it's smartest the, There's CEO. a lot of factors that go into running a successful company. Yeah. So you can't really just say that one thing. But, I, I, Doug, I wanted you to pull something up because I want to show Adam something. Can you can you Google Amazon Home rob, Robot real quick? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I got sent this DM, too. I love how people are, like, keeping tabs. Uh, you know what I get? I get all the ones of people like the the, the crew of five uh, normal people that just are, are getting ready to go take <laughs> Not a the trip. same. Yeah. Yeah. In the it's atmosphere, the dude. Not on the moon. This yeah. is yeah. this is a this is going to be a mass production. Look at this. It's Whoa. new robot. It looks it's too short to do any dishes, wheels. that's for sure. Well, and, oh, if dishes God. is the standard, yeah, <laughs> it we is, got a little ways That is to go. the standard because- I mean, uh, you can clean your house. Yeah, they already they the we floors. already have Siri and uh, what are all the Amazon ones? You know that that okay, so can change your, sta- your music and that can order fucking groceries. I want something to do my dishes. All right, so, manual labor. So bro. is that the criteria? Yes, it has manual to be labor. a robot that does your dishes. That's the criteria. That's it. Just like I have to get someone to land. <laughs> we got we got Roombas. Hey, just like I have to get someone floors. who lands on the fucking moon to win this argument. You guys won't give me that the five normal people that just went up to the space. I'm not winning. That but your argument. whole argument is people flying to the moon for vacation. Average people, y- like like a cost effective yeah, way. Yeah. All yes. I said was right. robots in your home. They're going to be like, no, like we were talking about doing dishes. Yeah. That's exactly what we said. Right. I said All that. Right. I believe we're that getting close. That's dude. fair. That, dude. The, that like, the average person would, the would, would be able to afford to take a trip to the moon before we will have a robot that will do your dishes. That's the argument. That's it right there. Yeah. Mm, and so right. both these don't work. So I can't use the people that are sending me shit in my DMs that are saying, hey, bro, check this out. Five people up in space. These are average Joes that are up there. Make sure you tell Sal. Like, no, it doesn't yeah. work. They're not going so, to So, like, are, are we going to have any consequences to this bet? Or, like, we, we got to, like, put some stipulations behind it. Did wanna... you see with Jake Paul, like, how Tyrone Woodley actually, like, oh, tattooed that yes, on his middle finger? Yeah, he did it. Yeah. No, I, I love Jake Paul. I don't want to add anything else here. He already still owes me a car from years ago. So. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's, all let's, right. Let's no tattoos on, you know, on her ass or something? H- hell no. Okay. But look at this robot, though. Look at this thing driving around. You talk to it. Well, what's it do? I mean, I mean, I is it know. just a robot that drives around that I still does no the idea. same thing that... Uh, oh, it, it, it gives bring, you a beer, dude. It can bring you a beer. Come on. Get that's kind of cool. Okay. Yeah, that's that's an advancement. But it's got to do the dishes, Justin. Yeah. Forget uh, that. It can't even open the beer, bro. That's not that cool. Such a, <laughs> such a chauvinist towards You come over here like, what the fuck? You didn't even bring the bottle opener. Give me a beer and clean my house. Yeah. They yeah. said that uh, the, I read an article that said that the robot from Rocky Four is a reality. I thought that was really cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, speaking of funny, crazy stuff. So yeah. I'm on. We have our, our private forum, and, and you know sometimes they post great stuff. And somebody screenshotted. So check this out. The art. We did a podcast episode. I don't know a couple weeks ago, where somebody asked us what we thought about turkesterone, and we also talked about ectosterone, right? The supplements, whether they work or not. Well, anyway. On the podcast, I said, yeah, it definitely works. And there's some studies that show that it works where there's a supplement company that clipped part of our podcast 
and use that as a way to sell their supplement. How cool is that? How sneaky. I feel that very cool. But I will say this. They never sent me a sample. Wow. We've never tried their supplements. So they're using it to sell their product. I have no idea. I don't know. It could be good. It could be bad. Yeah, shoot us no some commission, bro. What's I have up? no so. idea. But uh, but I did. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. It was, you guys know my relationship with supplements, right? Uh, dysfunctional at best. Yeah. Uh, but it's really cool that somebody used me talking to sell a freaking supplement. I well, thought that was really cool. Well, like you did get a lot of underneath that too is, uh, sure. um, what's his name? Uh, Derek, more more dates, more plates. I always say it wrong. I, I yeah, that's him. Yeah, more plates, yeah, more, yeah. yeah. I like him. Again. I do too. I've been following his stuff for a while now. I, I actually would, reached out to him. I, I would reached, love to get him on the show, I but reached, I don't know how to get him. I of reached him. out to him. Um, on Instagram? Yeah, I think it was Instagram that I sent the first message. I don't know. I haven't I haven't dug that deep to go see if I can get like a personal email and then put our team on trying to get a hold of him. Like, uh, I was hoping that he would see the message and then just respond. We've I like his stuff. We've both been tagged enough times. He's got to know who we are and and seen our content. So, but yeah, no, he puts out really good. If you smart anything, guy, anything related, SARMs, steroids, uh, supplements that are that are coming out and stuff like that. Um, kind of that edgy part of yeah. of bodybuilding. And Very fitness. intelligent dude breaks it down really well. Um, yeah, no, I, I like I like the stuff that he's putting out. I yeah. mean, he does a lot of that too. Like the, the I told you guys before about how everybody wants to know, like, oh, is this person natural? And then he like kind of he'll he'll take like whoever's going. Like the last one I saw him doing was uh, Dana Lynn Bailey. Is she natural? Yeah, and she's been claiming natural forever, and you know, so he breaks down kind of like her training career and talks about it, and he does it in an intelligent way that makes it intriguing to mm -hmm. to watch and listen to. So he's kind of made himself as an authority in that space. Hey, hey spe about that. speaking of hormones, I want I do want to say this. So we obviously we we started working with uh, Dr. Rand and their TRT and HRT clinic that we, in our opinion, the best in the business, and they got such a huge demand that some people had to wait and stuff. They put a calendar now up on at mphormones.com, right? So you can go there yep. and book your consultation on the calendar so you don't have to wait to get contacted. So this will speed things up. But a lot of people are having are really liking what they're doing. So I have a buddy who heard our podcast, called me up, and he goes, do you think that I may have uh, testosterone issues? So I asked him a bunch of questions, and I said, well... I said, you could try working out a little more consistently, changing your diet, see if that helps. I said, it won't hurt to get your testosterone levels checked just to see where you're at and this, you know, to see if you could rate, if you raise it, if it's going to make a difference anyway. Well, anyway, he did. He went and got tested. It came back in the 200s, which is really low. Yeah. So in other words, he could double his testosterone and it's still, still going to be, it's yeah. still not going to be great. Yeah. So he went on, uh, you know, hormone replacement therapy. And what they recommended that he do, and I'm not going to, obviously I can't say who this person is. This you know, will be a, a violation of their privacy or whatever, but he did testosterone. He also got prescribed nandrolone, which is Deca. known as DECA, right? DECA is what they say in the, that's the, that was the trade name, right? But nandrolone is the generic name and it's a low dose. And I'm like, this is pretty cool. They actually use, and this is approved for human use. And the reason why he went on, on nandrolone along with testosterone was for his joints, to feel mm. better and all that stuff. Oh, anyway, I thought, I thought Equipoise was only the one that was really no, good. No, so that's that's not approved for human use. That's only ever been for animal. But I thought that's what, like, I mean, in the bodybuilding community, like, it's... That's supposed to be for, like, pumps, red blood cell. No, that's what e they say. Equipoise is known as, like, it's supposed to be, like, a joint lubricant. Really? Yeah, and I've always felt good when I've taken EQ. Interesting. Um, I didn't know, I didn't know that yeah, so Deca was. Though. Yeah. So Nandrolone is, is supposed to be good for that. And it has something to do with pain receptors. And, you know, he mm -hmm. kind of explained to me, but anyway, he's been doing this and he's like, dude, he goes, I feel like a completely different person yeah. because I had no idea how bad I felt before. Now that I have oh, the contrast yeah, game so, changer. Yeah. Well, he's exact. He was, I mean, similar to that's where I was. I was just 250. Uh, and then I worked my ass off to get to like 400. And, you know, felt better than what I did at 250, but still didn't feel really yeah. good. And then it was, like, life-changing when I got yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, they put me on my speaking dose. of testosterone, but boosting it, like, naturally, I was, like, in this conversation. It was pretty funny um, with uh, one of the coaches I work with, my one of my good friends. And, you know, we were just talking about, like, stuff out there that, you know, you would – you would try and describe that just sounds like complete magic and nonsense. 
And uh, I was talking to him about, you know, naturally raising testosterone and this and that. Actually, like, red light therapy is, like, a proven, legit way to do it. It sounds so crazy. He's like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, like, you know, yeah shine some I, I red forget. light on your balls. Dude, sometimes you forget, like, we're just in this, like, total bubble of, uh, you know, whatever's advancing with health, fitness, and all that stuff. Like, so your true. average person is like, you're just shining red light on you. Like, they all just start laughing at me. Yeah. Yeah, like, I'm some kind of, like, the crazy person. That, yeah. Hey, that's such a good point, because that's I feel I get the same thing when I talk about the juve like that, because it does seem... And I forget, just like That's you, how we were. Yeah, we we're, felt that way. When yeah, they first yeah. approached us, I was like, what? No. And then they sent us all the studies. And then I thought to myself, okay, well, light has a profound effect on your body, obviously. I mean, one example is your body synthesizes vitamin D through exposure with UV rays. Lack of UV rays can cause problems. Too much can cause problems. So light does affect the body and the cells. And so, and then when you look at the, the literature, the red light, this particular type of red light, by the way, it's not just red light. Like you can't just get a red light bulb and do this. Yeah. yeah. It's a particular That's what I was trying to describe. Type. <laughs> they still weren't It, it gets the mitochondria to, to produce more energy and to work more effectively. What does that mean? Every cell that has mitochondria performs better. What cells in your body have mitochondria? All of them. Mm -hmm. So if you shine it on your skin, less wrinkles, it heals faster. Uh, it's going to seem more just more youthful cells. Yeah. You, if you shine it where you have like testosterone Scarring, producing psoriasis, I've seen improvement on all that stuff. Exactly. Yeah. If you shine it on uh, areas where you can hair. get to the, to the lighting cells, yeah. which are in the testes, those produce testosterone. You'll raise your testosterone, and then hair growth. That one sounded like snake oil. Yeah, that, that one one's actually sure. the most. That's one of the most proven ways of using. Red light therapies that it, you know yeah. regrows. Yeah, hair. people think you're crazy though, for sure. And I forget too that we're in this little bubble of ours because we re, we get all that stuff first. But yeah. I mean, it, it's you know, it's we'll see like in a year or two. Watch. I mean, when you start, I think once you see like the, how the sports teams are adopting it. Yeah. Well, that was it. That was sort of my angle because I'm like, well, the you know the 49ers like have a whole training facility where they have a recovery a portion of that like devoted to red light therapy panels, and then you have like all these other devices to to speed up your recovery. Yeah. So it's like they're jumping on this. They were on the they're on the front end of BFR. They're on the front end of cryotherapy. I mean, you got you have million dollar athletes, and there's million billions, hundreds of millions of dollars on the line to have a winning franchise that consistently. So they are they'll use every cutting edge they can, and so they're always a good place to watch. Now it is a, it is a therapy. Meaning you you get the FX yeah. if you use it. You don't get the effects if you don't Consistent. use it. Consistent, yeah. yeah. And the reason why, because red light therapy and the studies that support it have actually been around for a while. The reason why it never became a thing is because they were so expensive that in order to use these things, you'd have to go to a salon, spend a lot of money, and then you had to go a few times a week. Nobody was going to do that. <clears throat> now that you have companies like Juve, you can have it in your home mm -hmm. and now you can use it regularly. Now it makes sense. Uh, but before it just didn't make That's sense. That's why right? I have to explain this to other people that have psoriasis because I've, I've talked about how it's helped my psoriasis and I'm like, it helps while you're doing it. It doesn't help when you don't do it. Like if I, and I notice it right away. If I'm consistently doing three times a week is seems good to me. If I'm doing three times a week, 10 to 15 minute sessions, that's enough for it to, to dramatically improve what my psoriasis looks like. If I stop doing it, it'll only take like a week or two, and then I'll start to notice it yep. get, get bad again. So yep. it's something you got to consistently do. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying this podcast. Look, head over and check out Olipop. This is one of the partners that we work with, and they make sodas like Classic Grape. But here's the difference. This entire can has got about, what is that, 30, 45 calories in this entire can. No artificial sweeteners, and here's the best part. There are prebiotics and gut healthy compounds in this to help your gut. So it's actually a gut healthy supplement that tastes like the sodas you drank when you were a kid. Go check them out. Head over to drinkolipop.com forward slash mind pump. Again, that's drink, O L I P O P.com forward slash mind pump. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. Our first caller is Luis from Florida. Luis, what's up, man? How can we help you? Hey there, guys. So, um, I'm actually calling because I needed your help with something. I form, uh, first of all, I want to thank you guys for everything that you do. I actually form part of the coach to coaches, uh, group with NCI and mind pump. Uh, and I'm really grateful for everything that you guys have brought to, uh, to the table in the, in the last couple of sessions. Um, now my question basically is regarding my own personal, uh, fitness journey. So 
I'm a really big fan of advanced calisthenics and gymnastics. So I started off with gymnastics, learning handstands, front levers, back levers, uh, iron cross, all these more advanced technical moves. But uh, I'm also a fan of aesthetics. So it was very hard for me at the start trying to combine these because I would basically do a bodybuilding routine every single day with a, cal a calisthenics gymnastics routine. And my body just really took a toll. Everything changed once I um, started using anabolic. And instead of the trigger sessions, I did light calisthenics, uh, handstand skill sets in, in my days off. And it all was very beneficial, very helpful. And I was able to get both the aesthetics and the skill improvements uh, with calisthenics. Um, now, my problem is now I'm now that I'm done with anabolics, I want to go into more of a strong man or a powerlifting type of program, but I'm not too sure how to incorporate calisthenics with that because I also don't want to lose the abilities and the skills with all these gymnastic movements. Uh, how would you guys approach that? Yeah, that's great, a that's great question. Really good question. First off, uh, thanks for for uh, for saying what you did about NCI. That's been a really good experience for us working with. Uh, great coaches and um, you know we've gotten great feedback from it so I appreciate that now here's a deal with what you're talking about uh, you want to understand or consider that learning a skill takes a lot more effort and practice than maintaining a skill so for example so maybe a silly example but I think it illustrates what I'm saying learning how to ride a bike takes a lot of practice and a lot of effort and, and then keeping the skill of riding a bike for the most part if you ride it here and there you'll probably keep it um, now you're talking about you know calisthenics at a pretty high level, but it also sounds like you've been doing them for a very long time. I think if you want to maintain your ability, uh, just practice it on a regular basis. Now, don't do it as a workout, but rather just on a daily basis, practice the skills that you don't want to lose. And that should be enough to prevent you from losing those abilities too much. Now, you won't be as good as you would be if you train them hard all the time. But if you're doing like power lift or strong, and then you're practicing the calisthenics on a daily basis, when I say practice, I mean, literally, it's not a workout. You're practicing the skill. You're getting up on the bar. You're making sure you could still do the movement. I think if you do that on a regular basis, along with strong or maps power lift, I think you should probably be okay. I, I, I actually really like how you're doing this. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I think this is probably the direction that it, I mean, it, it all matters to like how much of the gymnastic skills that you still want to be good at, right? And I think if you want to keep them uh, at the level that you're at, which is, sounds like a pretty high level, I think your strategy is actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. And what's kind of neat about all the programs is most all that, at least all the ones I can think of right now, on top of my head. We've built them with these, uh, you know, you have your foundational days and then you have these, you know, in strong, for example, their work sessions. And so I would just drop my work sessions and I would do my calisthenics there instead. So you could follow strong and basically do the same thing that you did with anabolic. And I think you would see great success. I, I mean, I love what you do. And by the way, too, okay, and, I, and, there, and I, I would love to see you do strong and do that. But when we wrote these programs, we did write them to where you could run it back. So you don't necessarily have to. I know, obviously, it's financially beneficial for all of us for you to go through every single program. But the truth is, they, they've been programmed in a manner that you could run anabolic multiple times, you know, one after one after another and be fine because of the way that we phased it. So nothing wrong with how, you, how you're training right now at all. But if you do want to move into something more like strong or power lift, I would just take the off days and I would incorporate my gymnastics. Yeah, again, I, I want to echo that, um, you know, in terms of like how you're structuring it, I like. Um, however, I wanted to kind of pose another sort of option only because I know some of these movements are like super intense, right? So a lot of a lot of times they, they devote all of your effort, your body gets really taxed. Sounds like you got taxed doing it that way. Um, what if you flipped that, right? So you take anabolic and you do the trigger sessions in between your skills only because if, if that's your goal at the time, so you can kind of, you know, really hyper focus on, um, you know, building up that skill, but also like getting, uh, the recovery, the, the hypertrophy benefits of, of the trigger sessions in between, um, you know, trying that as well. If, if, if that's a little bit less taxing, you know, more moderate intensity, um, you know, giving that a go. Yeah, Luis, I think the bottom line to understand, and you know this as a coach working with clients, 
what they do the most of is where they're going to gain most of their, I guess, benefits or results, right? So if you do, if, if endurance training takes up the majority of your time, then most of your progress is going to be connected to endurance. If most of your training is, you know, devoted to strength or power or hypertrophy, uh, that's where you're going to see uh, most of your, of your results. Um, so if you want to continue to improve at calisthenics, you're probably going to have to make that the cornerstone of your workout. But if your goal is to improve your aesthetics more than your calisthenic skill, but you just want to be able to maintain some of those foundational skills, then the path that you're on is, is I, in my, in my opinion, perfect. You know, you follow one of our programs and then just practice those calisthenics on a regular basis because it's the practice that maintains the skill. Now, if you want to get better at it, it it's not necessarily going to work. But honestly, if you're, if you're good enough at, at those calisthenics to the point where you could a few times a day hop up and practice a few moves, you know, get on a handstand and hold that and come down, nothing too super intense, but just practice it throughout the day. Just doing that, your skill will probably maintain uh, pretty well. But that's there's always a give and take with training, always. He could, he could do a 2-1 also, like with like anabolic, the way that's structured. You could go a two two days of foundational, one day of gymnastics, right. and then actually do the trigger sessions. Right, mm -hmm. right. So there's, I mean, I, for sure, the, where you're, the, what you're doing, I think, is is great, and you can play with that. And, I th and you could actually change throughout the program as you're going through. Like if you feel like, oh, okay, I'm doing more than enough gymnastics, you could scale that back to Sal's point and mm -hmm. do more of the bodybuilding stuff. So, I mean, I think you actually get the concept. And I think that almost every program we have is very easy for you to just drop a day of strength training because yeah. most of the program, the only thing that would, the program I would tell you not to do with what you're doing is split. Because split, we break up the body parts, and then it's you're, so bodybuilding focused. It yeah. almost doesn't give you too much. Yeah, room. and then you're also going to end up sacrificing a muscle group if you do that. Where yeah. all the other programs are are mostly full body, so you can literally drop one of the full body days off and yeah. do a, a full gymnastics. Well, even day. yeah, performance was really set up so you you have those you know core foundational days, but in between is mobility. But you know there's room there to add in your skills, so you maintain yeah. those skills for your specific sport, and you just want to. <laughs> structure it in a way where it's kind of moderate to low intensity, but you're drilling, uh, you know, those skills. So if you can do that within the gymnastic realm, you know, that's totally an option. Yeah. One more thing to keep in mind of Luis, if you're building muscle and gaining weight, that will make your calisthenics more challenging and it, it will likely reduce your skill because, you know, when you're lifting weights, if you get bigger, you're fine. It doesn't really change anything. But when you're lifting your body, uh, now you've just made that exercise uh, more challenging and the shape of your body has changed and the leverages have changed a little bit. So keep that all in mind, but uh, it's it's not that big of a deal. You could always go back uh, to what you were doing before if you it's, really missed it. It's easy it. to lose muscle. It, it's not hard. <laughs> so I hope that yeah, helps. I wanted to really thank you guys. One of the great benefits I got from doing anabolics and uh, the skills days on my days off was that exactly that my weight was basically around the same i was eating a pretty high amount of calories but my body composition completely changed oh, beautiful. And i think awesome. i benefited so much from that that routine because before before tackling and doing anabolics i was doing basically what um, adam was just saying i was doing a, a bodybuilding routine five six times a day and on those same days where i would work out i would yeah. do a 30 45 minute oh, much. skill session and my body was just yeah. hurting yeah too much by the way when you say anabolics uh just for the listener he's he's talking about maps anabolic <laughs> that's yeah. steroids yeah. <laughs> sounds like you're talking about taking out of anabolic although it sounds <laughs> like you're on steroids when you run that program that's why it's, that's listeners. why it's named maps anabolic so th thanks louis by the mm. way do you have uh map strong or maps power lift do you have either one of those programs i don't have uh strong uh, all right how is how is this split on strong is it similar to anabolics is yeah like a three day a week yep yep very yeah. similar we'll, so we'll send it over to we'll you. send that over to you thanks for calling in awesome yeah. wow thanks guys no problem see you on the inside guy yeah i really enjoy these coaches and trainers that mm -hmm. we get to um you know I, when we all ran gyms and stuff it was one of my favorite things to do was to train coaches and trainers and we, you know it's we haven't done that obviously because we have the podcast so it's great to do this and work with people on the front line i actually enjoy that more than uh, training 
That was why I, why I was quick, why I was quick to take mm-hmm. the fitness manager role was I was actually kind of burnt out of training clients ten clients a day mm-hmm. was excited to actually train professionals so for most of my career that's what I spent most of my time doing yeah. was actually coaches yeah but you know again it's like when you design your routine a big mistake is to try to do everything so you can get everything and lose nothing mm-hmm. and you are going to <clears throat> overtax your body and you'll end up with less of everything right. your best bet is to prioritize one type of goal make that the cornerstone of your routine and then supplement that and then it may change and that's okay right. and, and yeah and, and fluctuate it like so if you, like do a different focus for a while and then come back to it, you know, the main goal that you have. But, you know, mm-hmm. that way you keep from plateauing. I love what he's doing, though. I mean, I think the, his strategy of... Well, he's obviously a trainer. He knows yeah, he has an idea. Yeah, no, I mean, when he was laying out what he had done, I it's think... It's a great structure. He yeah, no, there's created. nothing... And there's nothing wrong. That's why I wanted to say, too. There's nothing wrong with you running. If, like, you got shredded, you look awesome, you could still do your calisthenics, yep. you're loving the program, fuck, you could run it back. But I'm glad you brought up the point, too, that, you know, he's going to lose something if he keeps building, right? Because it sounds like he still wants to keep building. Well, you try mm-hmm. try doing, a you know, a, a handstands and, <clears throat> you know, iron cross or whatever the stuff you was with when your legs got bigger. Well, the, I, well <laughs> even, yeah. uh, you well, know, you we gotta talk. You got to grow with it, with your skills. You know, we talk so much about the whole, you know, ass to grass and then the, the you know, squat and scroll thing. Like, as I get bigger and bigger, it becomes really difficult for me to sit comfortably down in that position. So there's definitely a sweet spot of yeah. getting bigger and still still keeping my mobility you know yeah, yeah justin's ass to grass squats are like so short range of motion now because his cakes are just they're heavy <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's easy our next caller is joanna from canada hey joanna how can we help you hi um so uh first of all big fan for several months now I actually got into listening to mind pump after i came back from uh deployment in africa because i was quarantined and had not much to do. So I happened to cross your podcast and have been listening ever since. Um, so basically I got into bodybuilding and fitness a few, uh, years ago competitively before that I would do resistance training, um, but not really with any specific goal in mind and bodybuilding, especially unilateral training really helped me to identify like imbalances and stuff because I do have a pretty sedentary job. And so that really helped. Um, So my question is, I'm ready to kind of change my programming up. And I know you guys talk a lot about um, switching things up, increasing or decreasing rest periods, incorporating supersets, uh, changing tempo, stuff like that. So before I start to make changes, I would like to know how long should I incorporate these changes until I should see a difference versus if I try it for, you know, a couple of weeks and I don't really notice anything at what point should I move on and try incorporating a different kind of change? If that makes sense. Oh yeah. yeah that's, good, good question. That's a really good question. Okay. So number one, when you make a, a, a change in your programming and you want to monitor how it's working for you or if it's working, you have to know what to look for. So what do I mean by that? If I switch to a, a long rest period, low rep phase of training, what I'm looking for is strength. I'm looking to see if I'm moving more weight or doing you know, more repetitions with the same amount of weight, so long as I stay within the rep range. But usually it's more weight that I'm kind of looking for. Well, what if I'm doing supersets or shorter rest periods? What am I looking for? Now, strength is always welcome, but I'm not really looking for that. I'm looking for do I have more strength stamina? Am I getting a better pump? Um, you know, am I getting, is my technique even better with my exercises while I'm fatigued, right? Let's say my phase is more into mobility and practicing the technique. I don't care about any of that. What I care about is range of motion I have control over. Uh, do I feel it more in the in the target muscles? Am I doing better, you know, form and technique overall? So you got to know what to look for because if you're looking for the wrong thing in the wrong phase. Yeah, you might think you're not doing a good job when you are. Totally. Like when I do supersets with short rest periods, like I don't care about adding weight to the bar. In fact, in the past when I did care about that with supersets, it would really screw me up. Now I'm looking for, am I getting a better pump, better feel? Do I have more stamina at the end of my set? Am I breathing as hard as I did, you know, before? That kind of stuff. Now, one thing to keep in mind if this is all, you know, confusing, which probably not for you, you've been working out for a while, but let's say somebody's listening and they're like, okay, well, yeah, that's kind of, okay, I got to listen to my body, but you know, what does that look like? 
generally speaking, about three to five weeks is when you want to switch out of a phase. So about three to five weeks, you want to move out and that'll prevent you from, you know, from plateauing. That'll prevent you from hitting a wall. Usually people wait till they hit a wall before they switch. The problem with that is it's a little harder to back out uh, when that happens. So about three to five weeks. Now that first week or two, here's why I typically don't tell people to switch out one, you know, week one or week two. That first week or two, especially if you make big changes, is going to suck. Mm -hmm. Like if I go from heavy, long rest periods to short rest periods or supersets, like that first week is going to feel like crap. I'm just going to, I'm going to do my squats or whatever. And I'm going to be like this. I, I just, I'm, I'm weak. I don't feel good. It's just because my body is not used to that. So you got to give it at least two or three weeks before you can kind of pass, you know, judgment on whether or not it's working for you. Yeah. If you're doing it right in the beginning, I mean, that should be a, a major shift for you in terms of like your focus. So that way you, you are going to kind of go through that period of, uh, relearning, uh, you know, some of these movements that you probably haven't incorporated in a while. So they are going to kind of suck. It's going to be a grind and you have to give it ample time to, you know, for your body to respond uh, uh, the way it needs to respond. So yeah, at least like three weeks, a lot of times you're not going to even really feel like you're getting good at it. Well, the only one that just the, the one example you gave Sal, where you increase your, uh, time, right. Your rest period. That's about the only one you're going to see actually a very positive, uh, impact everything else. If you superset, you're you going to get you weak. right away. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, when we talk about weight, right. Yeah, yeah. You mm -hmm. get it like, cause that's like the easiest measure for everybody. It's like, Oh, I'm getting stronger. Yeah. Right. Every, everything else. Like if you're, you're getting weaker, you're going to feel more tired. All if you add supersets, you're going to feel more fatigued. Right. Mm -hmm. If you, you cut your, your rest period, you're going to be weaker. Like so that doesn't mean it's not working. Like it's mm -hmm. it, that, that's the adaptation that you're, tr you're going after. So you kind of just have to trust the process and know that, where, where you're really going to tell is when you go back to what you were doing before, yeah. right? So whatever you, whatever you, you, you do mo most consistently, you move out of that messing with tempo and rest periods and stuff like that. And then when you come back to that, that's where you should feel or notice like yeah. the biggest change. Well, it's a great point too, because I've got a lot of uh, people reach out like phase two of performance. It's like totally different, right? It's not that, you know, strength is something that's like, you, you kind of like recognize that right away, but being able to, uh, move efficiently in different directions and then be strong. And that is, is not something super obvious right away, but it's very beneficial. So, you know, there's ways of altering your programming that have massive benefit that aren't like so visibly yeah. obvious. Yeah. Joanna, here's a good rule of thumb. Stay in a phase until you feel like you're good at it. So that's usually takes about three weeks. Usually takes about three weeks when you feel like, oh man, I'm, I'm really good at this. And then you can start to think about switching out. Do not wait until it stops working. That's one of the biggest mistakes people make. I make that still because I get excited about a particular phase, especially if it's heavy. I just want to keep going. And then I hit a wall and then it takes me like two weeks to back out and I have to deload and do all that other crap. So you're better off moving out before you plateau. The opposite is true though, too. There's a lot of people that will, you know, oh, I'm going to try it. And they try it for two workouts and they're like, oh, I don't yeah, like no, this. You got to go longer than <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. You know, trust the process. At least three weeks. I like being more like four or five. So, and you'll find out everybody's body's a little bit different. So stick to it for at least three or so weeks. And then, and then you can go yeah. back and measure how your progress Joanna, is. Joanna, do you, do you have any of our programs? I have most of your programs. <laughs> oh, awesome. Excellent. Are you in our forum? That's why you're in good shape. Are you I am in your form. Oh, <laughs> all right. Damn, well, we got nothing to I'm give you, girl. Don't you, do you want anything for free? Do we have anything <laughs> we can offer you for free? <laughs> yeah. Pictures of Adam I or something. I was oh. too, like last month. So I'm like everywhere. Excellent. Well, we, we appreciate um, you. I do, I do have another question though that was in my initial email. Okay. Um, so it's about my glutes and hamstrings, which I know is like a bikini bodybuilder's nemesis. Um, so I have a, I have a lot of trouble gaining muscle in my bottom half as well as, uh, losing fat there because, you know, hormones or whatever. Um, so I do have a program that has three lower body and two upper body days a week. Um, but I do have MAPS anabolic and I'm hoping to start that, um, probably next week is my plan. So my question is about the trigger sessions. Um, should they be incorporated like, and I did notice the calendar, but it's there every day that you're not doing a foundational exercise, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm but we have, wondering. 
We have what? a we have a butt builder bundle. Do you have that? I have that. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. yeah. That's- but, uh, okay, you can also do trigger <laughs> sessions and make them focus on the glutes and hamstrings, and then start your lower body workouts with glute and hamstring work. So rather than going straight into squats, I would do a glute exercise like hip thrusts. I would do something for hamstrings, and then move into the rest Two of the blocks, of the leg work. Yeah, leg workout. So prioritize those those you know target areas always in your workouts that'll that'll be the best thing you could do the, the other thing that when when training my bikini competitors is it's it's hard to build too if you're in a cut a lot so you got to be you have to understand that like if you're trying to build your glutes and you're also leaning out at the time uh the likelihood of you actually seeing your glutes uh, good point. build and develop is very unlikely so you got to put you got to you got to be on a bulk so you got to definitely yeah. increase your calorie intake while you're also training or switching your programming up to develop the glutes. So a lot of times when I get these bikini competitors and I look at their diet and I'm like, well, you're not feeding enough. It's just, it's no different than the guy who wants to build his biceps. If he's in a calorie deficit all the time, he could do all the bicep curls in the world. He's not going to see his biceps get any bigger. So the same thing goes for that. So I would, the, the uh, calories and then also, you know, being able to have good glute activation in those big movements like the squats and deadlifts. So priming the glutes, before any of my my leg days, for sure. Those are the two main keys that I would make sure you're paying attention to. Yeah, you look pretty lean, so I think a bulk would probably be a good idea for this uh, for this particular goal. Yeah, I pulled out of competing this year, so we're doing my reverse right now, and the goal is to move into wellness next year because I think it's a more sustainable and like yes, don't work with me, I'll crush you with my legs kind of look, which I like. <laughs> um, for trigger sessions, though, is it basically any exercise can be a trigger yep. Yep. kind of exercise yep. as long as it focuses on that? Okay. Yep, as yeah, long but, as it's but, low intensity yes. and you're just getting a pump. That's the key. The, the thing that people end up doing is they turn it into like a workout. It's They're designed to be 12 minutes with rubber bands. And so if you are going to do, let's say, like glute bridges or something instead yeah. of like, you know, rubber band bicep curls, which everybody does. Yeah. J- just, just keep in mind that you're just trying to get like a light pump. You're not trying to really fatigue uh, the muscle. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, thanks cool. for calling. Thanks for calling Joanna. Sorry. We couldn't give you anything for free. Yeah, yeah. Make, sure you say hi in the, make sure you say hi in the forum. We appreciate your patronage. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. Good, good question about the whole phasing. Canada thing. has a military. Yeah, they, yes. that is, that's a hot deal. Yeah. They, they, they just they just I go to the, rising, right? I yeah. didn't know. They just go to the that's en- the first, first person I ever heard. They just go to the enemy and apologize. No, <laughs> sorry, so, sorry, sorry. <laughs> just yeah. kidding. Yeah. Um, you know, good question, right? Because that's the biggest. Uh, that's still a challenge for me is Growing knowing your, when your glutes to move. No, I have ex- excellent. <laughs> knowing when to move no, in and out dude. of of phases. Like when do you switch? When do you come out? When do you go into the you know? And especially when there's phases that you just don't have as much fun in. So yeah. always a challenge. It's, well, that's why too, it's, it's uh, a good idea to have a program. So you have something that like, yes. kind of takes it puts you, you on that. a schedule. It, yeah. And a schedule. And a lot of times you can, uh, you can go through that and, and find out, Oh, that's why I kept doing this for an extended amount of time because like your own intuition, a lot of times can trick you. You, you said she looked, I couldn't see her from here. You said she looked really lean. She looked like she lifts weights and she's lean. She, oh, yeah. she looked really pretty well developed I mean, from the, you know, the neck up or whatever from the shoulders. Yeah. All the bikini competitors I train, that was always the, the glute and hamstring. That's everything right for yeah. those shows. Yeah. That's what wins shows for sure for the girls. But I, most of them were trying to build a butt and one, they were doing all these high rep exercises and then stay in freaking yeah. and super lean body point. fat. And yeah. they're in a deficit. Calories, it's yeah. like, yeah, they're in a deficit and they're doing all these like, you know, pumping butt exercises. It's like, oh, dude, you're never going to grow. the Throw yourself on a nice yeah. bulk and go get get some heavy yeah. squats feed, and feed deadlifts. Yourself. Yeah. Our next caller is Lindsay from New Jersey. Hey, Lindsay, how can we help you? Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, my question is, is it possible to gain muscle when you're on a diet with um, restricted protein intake? So to give you a little bit of a background, um, I want to gain 10 pounds of muscle. I'm pretty lean. Um, I have a difficult time gaining weight and maintaining it. And I also have one kidney. So I had a a kidney removed when I was younger because it wasn't functioning properly. Um, Since then, I'm healthy. Um, I don't have any, you know, health issues. I do see a nephrologist um, every about six months, and I have lab work done just to make sure my one kidney is functioning and uh, my lab or my levels are um, normal. 
Um, but I did ask my nephrologist about gaining muscle and I told him I was eating um, one gram of protein per pound of body weight. And um, he said, absolutely not. That's way too much protein for you. You should be eating one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight, which would be like 52, 52 grams, which is like nothing. Um, I didn't really like that answer. So I decided to ask another nephrologist and get a second opinion. Um, that nephrologist basically said the same thing because I have one kidney compensating for two. It's working harder. And the kidneys do work harder to process protein. He did say that I eat 70 grams of protein a day, um, which gives me a little bit more wiggle room, but it just still doesn't seem like a lot of protein. So I don't really know what I should be eating. Yeah, no, that's a really, really good question. Kind of tough situation. So <laughs> it's also the right advice. Yeah, number one, I mean, okay, these are experts in kidney health. So I would definitely take. Um, their advice. But here's some good news for you, okay? Although high-protein diets have been shown in studies to be more effective at building muscle, you can build plenty of muscle on a lower-protein diet. There, there are plenty of vegan and vegetarian bodybuilders that eat far less protein than other bodybuilders and do totally fine. Now, what's the difference in muscle between the two groups? Probably not as much as you think. Um, I, I don't think you're missing out too much. I, I think the key is to be as healthy as possible. Here's what I would do if I was in your situation. Um, I would listen to the doctor, but then I would say this. I'd say, look, would you mind if I experimented with eating more protein and then could I get my labs done every few months just to see how things change, if anything changes? Because so I, I did... So I'm sorry. I did say that to him. Okay. Um, and he said, yeah, your, your levels are going to look fine now, but it might affect you when you're older. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, I would I would listen to what he says. But here's the deal. Carbohydrates are protein sparing. So you're going to eat carbohydrates. I'm sure that's totally fine. Calorie surplus is more important to build muscle, especially if you're eating your essential amounts of protein. I would make sure that the protein that you are consuming is of the highest quality. This is when the type of protein matters. When you're eating a high protein diet, you know, you always hear people say, Egg protein is superior. Whey protein is superior. You know, animal protein versus vegan protein. Doesn't matter if you eat a high protein diet. But when the protein is lower, that's when you see a difference. So what what you could do is you could eat the most high quality, highest in branched chain amino acid type proteins, which would be whey, animal protein, egg. That's where you're going to get the best bang for your buck. Grass-fed beef. Yeah. Other than that, I would I would definitely l listen to the doctor because you know a few pounds of muscle. Obviously, I don't have to tell you this wouldn't be worth, you know, because at some if, if your kidneys if your kidney started to reduce its function as you got older, then they really have mm -hmm. to restrict, and then it gets really hard. Are you are you following any of the mass programs? Yeah. So right now I'm on Maps Anabolic. This is my second time doing that program. Um, and before that, I did MAPS split and MAPS aesthetic. Have you done anabolic on a uh, calorie surplus or have you been dieting or on maintenance? What, how are you eating on, on those? Yeah, I mean, I'm always hungry when I'm on the programs. That's a good sign. But um, when I was tracking my food, it was to make sure I was eating enough protein. So now I'm not really tracking. I'm just kind of eating when I'm hungry um, because, again, I didn't know like what I should be eating. Yeah. Now you you're you're able to go to seventy grams, uh, according to the doctor. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And are you are you is that easy for you to do through food? Oh yeah. Okay. I'd, I'd stick to mm -hmm. I'd stick to animal sources, high quality, and I'm telling. Okay. You know, this is the truth now. Yes, a high protein diet has been shown in studies to be you know better than a lower protein diet for building muscle, but it's it's actually overstated. It really is. It's not as big of a deal. As people think, I've worked with plenty of clients who could not eat a gram of protein per pound of body weight because it made them constipated or bloated or they had you know negative digestive issues. We brought the protein down and they built more muscle because it made them healthier. Mm -hmm. So this is this you got to look at the individual. I mean, I know studies show generally what happens with people, but on an individual basis, you know, like I, I've worked with vegans who just felt so much better eating plant based. I could put them on an animal-based diet, and studies say that that's better for building. For them, it would have been worse. So, 
worry about you as an individual. And, and I know those studies show certain things, but those are general and you're an individual and you have individual needs. Focus on that. That'll, that'll be your best guide. Lindsay, are you in our forum? Uh, no. I would love okay, to, we'll, we'll send that over to you. I'd love you to get in the forum and then actually just stay, stay in contact with us and be and start tracking your food get yourself in a calorie surplus i mean the goal here is to gain 10 pounds of lean mass i think you can do that on that protein intake just being consistent with being in a, a, a caloric surplus and run some good programs so i yeah. think th those two things i think you're going to be surprised you're going to be okay now are you limited also like you can't i'm, I'm assuming they told you, you can't supplement creatine have you asked I did. Um, I even asked if I could do like small doses. They said, absolutely not. No okay. protein supplements. That's what I figured. Um, okay. No problem. Not a big deal. Yeah. If, if, if you get, if you're eating, you know, red meat, you're going to get adequate amounts of, of creatine uh, in your diet from that as well. But yeah, don't, don't worry about what you can't do. Focus on what you can and optimizing your individual body is always going to be best. Always. And again, I've worked, like I said, I've worked with many, many clients who had negative results or, or, or negative symptoms for meeting a high protein diet. It just didn't work for them. And so we brought it down and they did much better. That's great. All right. Thank you. Thanks for calling in. And um, I just wanted to say real quick, um, my boyfriend and I are huge fans. He introduced me to your podcast and I've been listening to you guys ever since we started dating. Um, we really appreciate everything you do for the fitness community. Oh, thank you, Lindsay. I Marry that, that guy. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> He's the one. Yeah. He needs to get me a ring. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Send him our way. We'll hey, talk to him. Not send, done it. send him this right, podcast. <laughs> thank you so thank you. much. Yeah. You know, it's tough. Th this is the this is the the bane of studies. Yes. Is that studies will show a general result that's true, right? Mm -hmm. There's a true general result. But sometimes we get so stuck on that that we forget that we are individuals. And if mm -hmm. it doesn't work for us, well, then it just doesn't work for us. And this has happened to me before where I've read studies on a supplement and this supplement's supposed to work and, oh, my God, it's supposed to be great. And then I take it and it just affects me negatively and I stubbornly stick to it because the study says so. It's like it, yeah. it doesn't work that way. We think you're missing out. But really, like the point is to get as healthy as possible and then your body will respond appropriately and – yeah, so it's it, it, the thing is you want a different answer, right? Because you see that study and you're like, well, I could still kind of pull this off, but you know that's really not your path. You right. have a different path. Well, especially if, if you're reading stuff in the fitness community, because everything around you know building muscle in our community is protein, protein, yeah. protein. Oh, yeah. One and a half it's grams. Magical. Is, yeah, and we're always shape. talking about eating more of it. So, and actually, seventy something grams is not bad for a female at all. No. Yeah. And, and I think she's. I couldn't see her from here very well, but she didn't look like she was that. I mean. From this angle, she didn't look like she was a big girl. She looked like no. a smaller girl. Yep. So 70-something grams is not- She's fine. Yeah, that's not bad at all. I had many clients that when I started tracking their protein, they were like 20, 30 grams yep. a day. Yep. And we doubled it to 60, 70. And they did and great. They did great. Built mm -hmm. all kinds of muscles. So I think she'll be just fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. Our next caller is Megan from Florida. Hey, what's up, Megan? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, first off, I just wanted to say thank you so much for taking my question today. Um, I recently started listening to you guys religiously, and I actually just purchased MAPS Anabolic. Long story short, I'm a 4'10", 15-pound female, and I have been working out for quite some time. However, I didn't discover macros, weightlifting, and all of that fun stuff until about 2017, also, at that time, I've almost always had a trainer uh, since 2017. Um, however, I recently decided to venture out on my own with training macros and calories. Um, these last set of trainers that I had, who I have the utmost respect for, and they actually are a big part of how I found you guys, um, discovered how low my calories have been. And for about a full year, I basically did... Uh, quote unquote recovery with them. My calories were as low as sometimes a thousand calories a day, uh, the highest probably about 1300. Mm. My calories got up with these trainers up until about 1800, but I felt terrible on them, which I was very verbal about with them. Um, I've done gluten free, I've done dairy free, dairy free. Um, I did gain some weight, which I was prepared for, but I am one of those females that really watches the scale and kind of has a hard time letting go of that number. So I did sort of resist them a little bit. 
Um, as we were about to start a cut, I did have to end my contract with them because my husband and I actually moved overseas. Um, and so basically, here's my question. Despite trainer help, despite eating well, following good habits, I cannot seem to build muscle no matter what I do. Um, I can't ever seem to lose my love handles or my lower stomach, basically. I've also been told previously that petite women have to eat less because we are so small and keep calories relatively low because it's so hard for us to lose weight. So what do you guys recommend for petite women? Yeah, I know. That last part's false. Yeah, no. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, good question. I know. I don't know if you've ever seen female gymnasts. uh, They're like smaller than you are and just, you know, jack. But, you know, here's a deal, by the way. What you're explaining is most people, especially most women, building muscle is not easy at all. It's very hard. It's a slow, long process, even for men, especially for women. So it can definitely be very frustrating. Now, here's the thing that I, I want to address. You talked about eating more and you didn't feel good. And then you talked about cutting out dairy and gluten. So I'm assuming when you said you didn't feel good, you noticed digestive issues. Is that correct? Okay. So I would address the digestive issues. You may have an underlying digestive issue that needs to get addressed. And gut inflammation and gut health issues are a massive wrench in progress. I know this personally. Okay. I, it always gets in my way when it comes to my ability to build muscle, improve my performance, even burn body fat. And when my gut health is good, it's like I'm a completely different person. So I would highly suggest working with somebody who's an expert in this field, maybe a functional medicine practitioner. And I think this will be one of the best investments you can make if you can address those gut issues, because then you can increase your calories, work towards building muscle, and you probably will get a better hormone profile. Some of the stuff that you're talking about, like not being able to burn body fat from certain areas, not being able to build muscle that may be related to hormone issues caused by gut issues as well. And then the last thing I want to say is always listen to your body. So just because you you're, you think you're supposed to eat X amount of calories, but you feel better eating less, then that's fine. You can eat less. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that. The, but because of the digestive issues, I would say let's focus on that first. I think if we get that out of the way – you'd be very pleasantly surprised at how much differently your body responds. A good uh, good investment would be uh, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Like uh, He has a program that he does, and he, I know he can do it virtually with you. Um, that can be expensive, so you can do this on your own. If you have the discipline to do like an elimination diet, um, you could go that route. So if you, if you But Stephen Cabral would be amazing to help you with the gut. The other thing that I would suggest too that I don't know if you were doing with the other trainer uh, or not – is when you do decide to go in like this, the caloric surplus is to give yourself uh, breaks. Like we always advocate mini cuts and mini bulks. And so if I had someone like you and I, and we were only at like a thousand calories and we 1800, that's a significant difference. That's double. So I, I would do something more like 1500. We'd be running that consistently for a week or two. And then I'd give you two or three days where we'd actually drop the calories significantly and then go back up to the bulk. And so I'd kind of give your uh, your digestive system a little bit of a break by actually having some low calorie days intermittently in there. So even though the goal is to increase the calories, get you eating more, I would still break it up with these days. And you might have just been consuming uh, so high for so long consistently that that's also what was bothering your digestive system too. Yeah. And, and again, it may be the kinds of foods you're eating. It may be that you need to treat something like SIBO. Or maybe work on motility, which would be more of a specific, um, you know, type of application. But if you if you don't get that out of the way, it's going to be very challenging with everything else, especially if those gut issues persist. But here's the good news: once they get addressed, man, the the change in how your body responds and how you feel is like it's really it really is night and day. Megan, it makes a huge difference. Now, so. when you were uh, gaining weight, did you feel though that you're stronger at that point too, or was this yeah, what, I, what did that look like? I did. I did. Um, I wouldn't say that I was going crazy in the gym, um, but I mean, I was lifting. Um, I was deadlifting, and I, you know, re- like I look back at my app that I logged all of my workouts in, and I realized that as I was eating more, I was lifting heavier. So I understand that correlation. Mm-hmm. Um, 
things like that. One thing I did want to bring up, you guys mentioned hormones. I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism Mm. about a year ago. Mm -hmm. However, that particular doctor, I didn't really do my research and he was just one of those doctors that, oh, it's this. So here's this medicine. And he put me on a thyroid medicine. And then I actually went and had some blood work done. Um, I came off the thyroid medicine and I had blood work done post that and it my thyroid levels were fine. And so I'm a little worried that maybe being on that medicine messed up some hormones. I don't know if that's, I don't know a whole lot about hormone health. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, so I'm not real sure. If that Stephen plays Cabral, a Dr. Yeah. Stephen Cabral, be Dr. Dr. Becky Campbell would yeah. be another person you can work with. Um, but you, so you could have normal thyroid, but you could have antibodies so that the thyroid that you are producing just isn't working, or there could be a dysfunction somewhere else, or or it could literally be coming from the gut, and the and poor gut health will affect all of those things as well. So a functional medicine practitioner that yeah. really does a good job is worth their worth weight in weight. gold. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Thank, Perfect. Thank you so much for calling in, Megan. Hey, no, thank you for taking my question. Yeah, I appreciate it. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of those things. It's like, you know, you if you have an underlying kind of issue and mm-hmm. it doesn't get addressed, it could feel like everything else that you're well, doing right. It's going to get louder and louder if you don't address yeah, it. Yeah, and it just doesn't work. It's like, yeah. uh, I, I've addressed workouts. I've addressed sleep. I've addressed, you know, this. And But what the hell is going on? It's like when we get guys uh, and they go to, you know, see their testosterone levels and they're like, oh my God, my testosterone is low. No wonder everything that I was doing, you know, just wasn't working. So. You know, this is where an investment in someone like Cabral would be amazing. Totally. I mean, to me, it's like kind of a, a no brainer for us. So long. And it sounds like she can afford it. She's hired personal trainers and she's, she's right. invested in uh, her, her health before. So I think investing in someone like taking uh, uh, someone like him for a couple months, I think would do wonders for where yeah. she's at. Totally. Look, if you like our information, you'll love mindpumpfree.com. We have a lot of free guides there that can help you do everything from build muscle, burn body fat, improve your health. We even have guides for personal trainers. Mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam.